Do you ever look around and wonder why our neighborhoods look so run down? Why did people leave communities and move to the suburbs where there are mostly white people? What changed in the urban areas that people lived in, or did our mindset change, causing them to move further out and establish new communities? These are several questions to ask in order for us to understand the change that has become known as white flight. On April 6, 1865, slavery became illegal in the United States. In the year 1954, the Supreme Court outlawed segregated public education facilities for black and white people at the state level, and in the year 1964, the Civil Rights Act su superseded all state and local laws requiring segregation. In 1968, the Fair Housing Act was passed making it illegal to not sell, raise prices, or discriminate against any person because of that person's inducted class. Still, equality is years away. The dictionary definition of white flight is the phenomenon of white people moving out of urban areas, particularly those with significant minority populations, and into suburban areas. In the past, white flight has moved people from neighborhoods because of the unjustified fear of them being unsafe. This fear was developed because of redlining. Redlining was caused by the Fair Housing Act of 1968, which allowed government agencies to deem certain neighborhoods unsafe. This was done with no reasonable evidence. The way they determined this was by ethnicity. Neighborhoods with predominantly white people would get blue or green, meaning safe, while other neighborhoods with predominantly black people would get red, hence the name redlining. This dropped real estate prices in these areas, causing people to move out to the suburbs, giving it the name white flight. The African Americans in these neighborhoods would try to move out, but the landlords would break the law and raise the prices to ridiculous amounts to keep them out. As Martin Luther King once said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. In A Raisin in the Sun, a play about an African American family, the main characters from the younger family are heavily affected by white flight. White flight started when the government was handing out home loans to people they only thought could pay it back. The rich white people decided to flee to the newly constructed suburbs into very nice houses to use their home loans. The government also constructed roads for the people in the suburbs to travel in and out of the city they used to live but where they still work. When this happens, the richer people don't give their support and money to the city, which leads to the quality of everything lower. This has an effect that could be seen in many neighborhoods of only one race. In A Raisin in the Sun, they describe the younger's home by saying, the carpet has fought back by showing its weariness, with depressing uniformity elsewhere on its surface. White flight is causing the youngers to live in this poor housing because since the funding goes to the suburbs, it leaves African American neighborhoods run down and underfunded. Whether you realize it or not, white flight is still present today. White people in northern cities have really begun resorting themselves, specifically away from black people, in the first, first decades of the 20th century. What happened then remains rev relevant to the American cities that are still racially divided. When you look around Manhattan, there are certain neighborhoods that consist of only African Americans, or only white people. The segregation is still happening today. In the city, we are constantly seeing run-down neighborhoods where most residents are people of color. Then in other parts, we see nice and modern neighborhoods where over 90% of the people are white. One reason you see this is because of the ever-present white flight. When people of color started to move into the neighborhoods that are occupied by white people, the white people there usually see them as a threat to their schools and communities. Now, Mayor de Blasio has been creating a plan to make schools in white or black neighborhoods more diverse. He pulled people's opinions on this plan. People in the Upper West Side said that they were poised to leave their schools if this was to happen. These polls just go to show how present white flight is today and how people are still willing to leave their community just because people of color are moving in. White flight has destroyed what were once great places to live, but have now fallen into decay and sorrow. However, it only exists because of this invisible barrier between races, and like any barrier between people, you need to break it down. But this is a barrier that exists inside all of us, and everyone needs to find their own way to destroy it. For some people, it may be as hard as finding out what makes them like someone else. For others, it may be as easy as talking to their neighbor. But we all need to do our part to stop the most destructive domino chain in the world. We can stop white flight and save our neighborhoods if we fight and work together. You can make a difference.